Welcome, everyone. It's good to have you with us on Crem 2 News First at Four. I'm Jane McCarthy. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Tom is off today. Two people were taken to the hospital after a car crashed through a fitness class. This was at the YMCA on Spokane South Hill. Now, this is the second time in less than eight months a car has come through this same building. Crem 2's Shana Waltower shows us more. Yeah, before today, the only glass that was inside of this workout room was the glass that was on this mirror that people would use as they were working out. But now this room is filled with shattered pieces of glass from what used to be a large window. You know, doing my, my class every Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, we do a, a body condition class. A normal part of the day for all of these people at the YMCA. We were almost at the end. Um, we were... We were working on the shoulders. We were about to move on to the court. Sergio Merguia's class was wrapping up for the week, but it wasn't a water break that ended this exercise. Within three seconds, this just car went in and just whoo, took up a couple people. And left many others running to call 911. And you just hear people screaming, people on the floor, and I just didn't know what to do. Police say a woman mistook the brake for the gas pedal and drove right into the building. The two people she hit were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The driver walked away okay. It's the second time police have had to come to this building and not for a fitness class. Just back in November, a similar incident happened. Right over here, um, I guess she, she said she hit the acceleration instead of the brakes and just ran into it. but. Nothing compared to this. It was harsh. Yeah, it was a it was a brutal thing to see. You know, all your friends just kind of slam into the wall and yeah. People typically need physical breaks from workouts, but this time it's emotional. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a while where I can do this again, start teaching again. I I'm gonna take a maybe a couple weeks off so. A contractor for the building says he's thinking about putting up barriers between the parking lot and the building. But for now, it'll be closed for the rest of the day. Shana Waltower, Crime 2 News. Glad no one was seriously hurt, yeah. right? My goodness. Well, we are kicking off the first official day of summer with rain showers and below average temperatures. They might not sound like a great forecast because it's Friday, but the weekend could be looking up. It's still summer, right? <laughs> Thomas Patrick in the Weather Center tracking highs in the 70s. Yeah, still summer, and that's the key, so it means it's all relative. Yes, cooler than average temperatures, but it is pleasant if you maybe have to go outside in the morning and do a little bit of jogging. That was really perfect for me this morning, but it was a little bit on the chilly side. For those of you in Deer Park, check out the lows. 36 degrees, that a record low for Deer Park. So when I think first day of summer, I don't necessarily think Oh, four degrees above the freezing mark, but that's where we started uh, today. That's how we start the season. A couple spotty showers here and there. Uh, they are fizzling out pretty quickly, so not expecting any more issues for today. As you see, uh, just some scattered showers over the uh, uh, the Idaho mountains as well as in northeastern Washington. If we see a sprinkle, that's the heaviest it's going to be for the rest of the day today. So a little bit cool tonight. If you are heading to downtown Spokane, temperatures will largely be in the 50s in the overnight hours. But tomorrow, much warmer yet. 75 should be plenty of sunshine to kick off the weekend. That feels a bit more like summer, but I'll let you know if we have any hot weather in our upcoming forecast. That in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. A University of Idaho professor, a law professor, is suing the school. Shakira Sanders is the only black tenured professor at the law school. She claims she was treated differently than her male counterparts based on her gender and her race. In one example, Sanders says she wanted to teach a specific class she'd taught before. Instead, the class was offered to a white male professor who had not taught the class. The University of Idaho declined to comment on this lawsuit. The Stevens County Sheriff's Office arrested a man accused of stalking a woman in the Chewila area. 20-year-old Gray Femling was arrested and booked earlier this month. Investigators believe he stalked a woman for months. But since the case is still ongoing, there are not many details released to the public at this time. However, deputies suspect there could be other victims and are asking them to come forward. Krem 2's Alexa Block has more on the investigation and we'll hear from her tonight at 5. Well, two brands of bottled water could contain high levels of arsenic. This is according to the Center for Environmental Health. The organization tested Penafiel and Starkey water, 
Both brands are sold at Whole Foods, Target, and at Walmart. The arsenic levels are so high, California law now requires the companies to include a health warning. According to the CDC, long-term exposure to high levels of arsenic can lead to cancer. This is not the first investigation into this problem. Back in 2016, more than 2,000 cases of Starkey water were recalled after regulators found high levels of arsenic. As of now, the FDA has not issued a recall of either brand of water. And you've probably heard this one lately, a study out of Australia claiming young people have their heads down and staring at their phones so much, they're starting to sprout horns on their skulls. As you can imagine, a lot of people are concerned about that. Some scientists, they're not convinced. Mark walks us through the findings as we try and separate fact from fiction. Well, this is an x-ray of a 28-year-old man, and you can see this arrow-shaped object coming out of the back of his skull. Well, two Australian researchers believe that bone spur, or horn, grew as a result of too much phone use. The study indicates these bone growths have been turning up more often in people 18 to 30 years old. This may sound scary, but there are mixed opinions in the medical field. A physical therapist in New York is entertaining the idea. He says if we are constantly straining one part of our body, our bones can adapt and form a small mound of support. But this is not necessarily a scientific breakthrough in his mind. He says what's more worrisome is what these growths reveal about our posture. If young people are slumped over their phones all day, they could develop neck and back problems at an earlier age. A neurosurgeon is not buying the idea. He says neck and disc problems are common, but quote, head horns are not. As far as the research goes, other scientists are finding holes. The study is based on x-rays taken in the past and does not have a control group. And if we really want to get down to the nitty gritty, horns are not actually made of bone. An anthropologist says horns are made of keratin, the same material our fingernails are made of. All in all, experts say there is no need to make a doctor's appointment to check for horns, but if you are having neck or back pain, you should see a physician. All right, Mark, thank you. Well, new technology is giving brain surgeons a new perspective. It's called augmented reality brain surgery. The program blends digital images and real life shots of the brain, and it gives doctors a deeper look into the brain, and that can reduce the risk of error. And it's just, it's a real game changer um, to be able to see exactly where you're going in real time through a heads up display um, in the operating microscope. It's exciting. It's an exciting time to be a neurosurgeon. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to go back to the, the old way of operating. And the first patient to have brain surgery using this technology is in Idaho. His doctors say the program significantly cut down on his operation time. If you have a Washington driver's license, congratulations. According to a law firm, it is the toughest driver's license to get in the entire country. The law firm ranked the tests in every state and took into consideration things like handbooks, the number of questions on each test, and the actual driving test. Washington ranks number one. Oregon holds the number 16 spot. Idaho coming in at 29. The study also found that it costs more to get a driver's license in Washington than any other state. Mm. Boeing is testing out its 777X jet. The aircraft underwent its first taxi test this week. The giant jet is still in development. Engineers are working on the airline's folding wing tips. The outside 12 feet of each wing can fold up and this will allow the jet to get into airport gates. The plane's overall wingspan is 253 feet. Company leaders hoped the plane would be making its first flights by now, but testing in Ohio found durability issues with the engine. Boeing expects to have the problem fixed by the fall. Well, people around the globe are kicking off their shoes and rolling out their mats. It is International Yoga Day. In a gesture of yoga dis diplomacy, India's hmm. prime minister invited soldiers, police officers, and diplomats to strike a pose for peace. The Prime Minister lobbied for a World Yoga Day back in 2014, and now millions of people are joining him in the annual practice. He calls yoga India's gift to the world. There you go. Well, the Spokane Indians have their home opener tonight at Avista Stadium, and fans are expecting a number of fun activities to kick off their first home game. So for tonight, expect opening night fireworks, plus all fans will receive a free AAA magnet schedule. Tomorrow is Storybook Princess and Fireworks Night. 
Fans are encouraged to wear their favorite prince or princess outfit. And then on Sunday, it is National Pink Day and Breast Cancer Awareness. Fans can show support for breast cancer awareness and research by wearing pink to the ballpark. And Krem 2's Brenna Green will be live from Avista Stadium. She'll have everything you need to know ahead of the game during our 5 and 6 o'clock newscasts.